Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX Capital, and welcome to our webinar, The Trend is Your Friend. I hope everybody's having a delightful weekend, and you're ready to spend a little bit of time of improving your education levels. Now, for those of you that haven't joined us before, ETX is a regulated provider, and therefore I'm required by law to give you what's called a risk warning. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information is provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETS Capital and the presenter are not financial or investment advisors and do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Any securities or instruments that are mentioned are for educational purposes only. And for those of you that are joining us through the internet and don't know much about ETX, we are a fast-growing financial services company, and we are based in London, so you're welcome to come by our offices and say hello. We are authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, and we are a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. We offer many different styles of trading on our platforms. You can use our Web Trader, our MT4 platform, or our ETX binary platform. We offer everything from binary options to Forex to commodities to CFDs to spread betting if you're based in the UK. So we can satisfy all of your needs, but always make sure that you're dealing with a regulated provider. Now today's class is called The Trend is Your Friend. And if you're new to trading, it's a, an adage or a jargon or a saying from the markets that you'll hear all the time. And it is one of the most important things to remember. Trading with the trend will be more successful statistically than trading against a trend. But regardless of whether you're trading with the trend or against the trend, understanding the trend and knowing how to put a trend line on a chart is crucially important to give you the information you can use to make smart trading decisions regardless of what type of system or strategy you're using. Because the markets do move in trends, identifiable patterns up and down. Now, when you start what we call technical analysis, and almost every drop of technical analysis is done on a chart, and you have to understand the basics of charts. If you don't, we have a one-hour class called Charting Basics, and we'll teach you the differences between the types of charts and how to use them properly and why, what purposes they serve. And also, this month, we have a two-week course in using Japanese candlestick charts. So make sure you come to them. I find for applying trends, I prefer <clears throat> using a bar chart, only because it gives you a cleaner view. And then today, with all the modern charts, you can then click on a button and convert it over to candlesticks. But some traders like using candlesticks from the get-go. And so when we're talking about tops and bottoms, we're talking about the tops, the edges of the wicks on a candle, or just the top and the bottom on a bar chart. But you should understand the different types of charts, because charts are basically your roadmaps to success. And the first line you're going to put on this roadmap is going to be your trend line. So a bar chart, much like a candlestick chart, maps out the open, the high, the low, and the close for the current time period that you're looking at your charts. Whether you're looking at a 15-minute chart or a one-hour chart or a three-hour chart, that bar or that candlestick is going to cover that time period. Now, trend lines are a useful tool for visually highlighting a trend and potentially being part of a trading strategy. There are lots of myths and inaccurate information about trend lines, though. Learning how to use trend lines effectively, if you're going to use them, is crucial so you don't fall into some common traps. Trend lines are a technical analysis tool used to define and project price trends in major markets such as stocks, forex, and futures. Trend lines have the potential to alert us when a pullback is over or a trend is resuming or when a trend is accelerating or reversing. Although price is the ultimate indicator, though, there are other things to be considered when using trend lines, but you always have to pay attention to 
price action. Now, trend lines are drawn on charts to help predict the general direction of price. They also help you see reversals. Trend lines also help to determine good at entry and exit points and help you decide where to put your stops. Wow, they do sound like magic lines, right? Well, not really. They are quite good, but they won't, like any form of analysis, if used alone, they won't make you many pips. However, they make a great addition to whatever your trading arsenal is. The main problem with trend lines is placing them on your chart. It can be a little intimidating at first, but it is quite easy once you get the hang of it. Now, the thing about most traders is they are trying to come up with some unique strategy or a customized strategy that will give them an edge in the marketplace. The thing about trend lines is you don't want to customize them. You don't want to make an edge. You want to draw the same trend line that a million other traders around the world are doing. Because you want to know what price should have an action or reaction. What price level or what support or resistance level is crucial that the traders around the world will react to. So if you don't draw your trend line on correctly, you're going to be waiting for a price response at the wrong price. So trend lines and support and resistance lines are the foundations of your trading strategy. They try to tell you price points that are going to be interesting or increase vo volatility or increase volume or that traders are going to react to around the globe. And you need to be figuring out what that price is that's important to everybody. Now, the purpose of drawing trend lines is identify where possible reversals will take place. They can also signal that a trend is about to occur. In an uptrend, draw the line along the lowest point in the price trend without letting the line cross through prices. You need to at least two touches of a trend line. So drawing trend lines. Okay. When you draw a trend line, you draw it either under prices if you're in an uptrend or over prices in a downtrend. So there are two main types of trend lines. You have bullish trend lines and bearish trend lines. And basically, you are connecting together the peaks and the valleys of price movement. Because remember, price doesn't move in one simple direction. It doesn't move straight up. It climbs and it goes in peaks and valleys as it's going or highs and lows or support and resistance levels. Okay. And naturally, traders take and push price up in an uptrend, but they don't push it in this straight line. They push it forward, then it eases. It pushes forward, it eases. It pushes forward, and it eases. Your trend line in an uptrend is drawn underneath the price. If it was a downtrend, you would be drawing your trend line over top of the prices. Okay. Because it is creating your support and resistance for the current price movement. Okay. So here is a bullish trend as opposed to the bear. The This is the bullish trend as opposed to, I'm sorry, the bearish trend. I need to change my heading there. So, there are rules to draw the proper trend lines. The trend is your friend, but like all friendships, it's a complicated one. Unless you understand the nature of the trend, your friendship is destined to fail. As any trader quickly realized, there is a great deal more to trading successfully than merely identifying securities trend and buying pullbacks in an uptrend and short shorting bounces in a downtrend. So let's get started. Okay. So to begin with the basics, an uptrend is a series of higher highs and higher lows denoted on a price chart. Now you can have weak trends and strong trends. Trading in a weak trend is very difficult. Okay, trading in a strong trend is easier because the trend is better developed. So what you have in an uptrend is a push 
and an ease, a push and an ease. And there are some rules. When trends recover, when they ease down, the next easement should never be lower than the first easement. And this will be shown to you when you draw your trend line because it would void your trend line. And I'll show you in a second. In sideways trends, and remember, there are three trends, uptrend, sideways, and downtrend. In an uptrend, again, price moves up, it eases, price moves up, it eases, price moves up, it eases. Why is it a sideways trend? Because the lows in that trend are not climbing successfully higher. Then we go, and it just doesn't always happen in this direction. I'm not giving you this chart saying this is always the way a trend works. This is just how you analyze an uptrend, a downtrend, and a, a sideways moving trend. A downtrend, price falls, and again, in this case, the bears get tired out, and the bulls take a little bit of momentum. The bears take control again, the bulls take a breather, the bears take a breather, and then they push down. So you have successful highs and lows or peaks and valleys. So a downtrend consists of lower lows and lower highs, where a sideways trend is a trading range in which the price of a security swings back and forth within a sideways trend channel. Conventional wisdom tells traders to buy in an uptrend, short or sell in a downtrend. Now, I'm not telling you that you should always buy in an uptrend, nor am I telling you not to ever sell in a uptrend. But the fact is, statistically, you will find that if you learn to buy in an uptrend at, at, or sell in a downtrend, you will make more pips than if you tried to be a contrarian trying to find the sell point or the buy point in the opposite trend. And I'll show you why when we get to what's called retracements and reversals. Because what happens, if you're looking to sell, what happens, you try to guess where this point's going to be. And you can never guess where this point's going to be. You can predict where this point's going to be because that will be on your trend line. But there's no guarantee that that price will fall down to that trend line. It's just going to stay above that trend line. So statistically, you're better off trading with the trends. Now, there are two major obstacles that will, you will run into while attempting to apply this traditional wisdom. First, not all trends are regular. In other words, while one type of support level may hold well in one uptrend, such as a popular 20-day period moving average, in another trend it might hold that the 10-period 10, 10 moving average at one pullback than at a 20-period, then something somewhere in between as price advances. In each case, however, the security continues to make higher highs and lower lows, thus holding an uptrend. When a different support level holds within the trend, it can be difficult to know which one to use as a guideline for initiating a long position. You will also have to keep in mind that no trend lasts forever. Some point at some point an uptrend will become exhausted and will break through support instead of pulling back to into it and bouncing and then will continue higher again without a solid understanding of how trends exhaust themselves and the tools for recognizing different types of exhaustion and how they affect the correction of the trend you can easily find yourself on the wrong side of a market move so understanding continuations reversals breakthroughs and breakouts, as well as retracements, are very, very important. Most traders who pick up a book on technical analysis will run into a concept of trend formation or trend development, whereby the trends consist of a series of three waves of upside that often punctuated by two smaller correction waves. Templates for this type of trend development are typically similar to the one shown over here on this figure. These then start combining with what the Elliott wave patterns and patterns in trends. Trend lines are one of the most used, misused tools in a trader's toolbox. If you're going to use them, you have to have a consistent methodology that defines when you draw them, where you would draw them, and what you would do when price touches them. Too many times I have seen traders draw random lines and charts with the argument that they may not 
use it, but it's good to have it there. I tend to strongly disagree. If you don't have specific rules, then you will draw trend lines you wish were there. And unfortunately, this is what happens with a lot of new traders. They draw ones, and there's sometimes a trend line that looks extremely pretty on a chart and has lots of valid validity, and you see lots of successive lows touching that line, but the trend line is not being drawn correctly, and therefore the action and market reaction you're getting is at a wrong price. So if you don't follow the rules, then you were just drawing a, lengthy, a line that you wished it was there, there that has no validity. If you do not have consistent rules, then you are probably just drawing random lines and charts, which cannot help you tr your trading and will probably hurt it. So first of all, we should define what we expect out of a trend. There are legitimate trend lines connecting lows of a move to highs of another move, draw, drawn on the best fit effort through the center of price action or drawn through any number of other chart points. I have not found most of these to be useful in my own trading because I expect something very consistent with a trend line. The main reason I will use a trend line is to delineate the conditions that define the current trend of that market. If that market trend line correctly defines those conditions, then penetration of the trend line are significant. They aren't significant if you're just putting lines on that you would like to put on a chart. So let's go over to some live charts and let's just see how you would properly assess where to draw your trend line and how to draw them. So let me pop them up on your screen. Okay. Now, we're looking, at, let's go over to the Euro US dollar. Now on the left, you see a red and a blue, a red and a blue line extending from the left side of the chart. These are trend lines that I had drawn on this chart several days, if not weeks ago. And they are being extended forward because you have what's called long-term trends you have medium-term trends, and you have short-term trends. If you're trading in, whether it's binary options, CFDs, spread betting, and you're trading in short time intervals, okay. if you're a day trader, these long-term trends can help you determine importance of price points, but you need the short-term trend to help you decide where you want to trade today. Where if you're a long-term investor, you're only concerned with those longer-term trends. Or if you're a swing trader and you're more concerned where price is going to be over the next four to five or six weeks, then you're more interested in medium-term trends. But your trend line should fit the chart that you're looking at. But these longer-term trends can help give you value and information. And the more data you collect, the more price points that you know that are valid or important, the more helpful they're going to be and the, more, the better decision you're going to make. So the two trend lines on the left okay are a long and a short or medium term trend that I had drawn quite some time ago now the blue trend line if we had extended it forward this way okay would have become invalid at this point because the price broke through it the red trend line which is a longer term trend line would have kept us valid all the way through this price movement and of course would have become invalid once the price broke through it. But it told us, look at all of this pr trading we could have gotten in that range. Now, I've drawn the, the correct short term. We're looking at the Euro US dollar in 30 minute. I've drawn the correct short term price trend on here. Okay. Now, remember price, there's no trading day, it's Sunday. So we're looking at a 30 minute chart so what we look for is the reversal of a current trend line. So we have price moving up, and then price started moving in a downtrend or down movement. So we look for what's called the swing high. That's the highest point that the price had reached before when it changed direction. Okay. Then we need to lay that price on the chart with a trend line that has not been broken by a price action. So in other words, we're connecting a swing high to another swing high and then projecting the price out into the future. Now, many traders would much prefer drawing a trend line here because they think that's more valid with the current price movement, 
but it's not a valid trend line. It's not a price that's going to be important to any of the traders in the market. Now, this price might be important for other reasons, but not on this trend line. Okay. Now, what we have to do is we can draw a trend line through any two swing highs in a downtrend or any two swing lows in an uptrend. But for it to become valid and usable, it must have a third connect. So the trend line we're looking at in this chart is not valid yet. It is the proper trend line, but we're looking for a price to come up and touch this trend line again. But we can't ignore it and say, ah, that's too far away from price because it's not going to happen because what's going to happen is as price moves down, if we try to adjust this, we're still in one single downtrend. So in this case, we might want to look at also longer term trends. But we could have in this price movement a sideways trend here because you can have short-term trends within other term trends. But you have to realize this short-term trend only took place in a few hours in trading on Friday. Okay. Well, if you're looking for a day trade in a very short-term trade, you're more concerned with this price in this shorter-term trend, where if you're looking to establish highs and lows and stop loss and take profit points, you would be, and, and you're looking to more than a single day trader or a high frequency trader, you will be looking for in a longer term trend. Now, the fact is, trend lines don't always look pretty and they don't always lay out where you want them to lay out. And that becomes a problem for traders because they want to make the trend lines pretty. They want to see something that they can look at. So here we're looking at the pound current trade of the pound and you can see I put two trend lines on here actually let me change one of these to a different color so you can see them better this is the correct long-term trend okay now we actually have one point here the swing low it validated a second time here and we got a third validation here okay so we have an active trend line but a short-term trader might want to have gone down here to this swing low and brought it up here because it's closer to price. But if you notice, my longer-term uh, trend line is still just as valid. Now, the more times that a trend line has been touched and bounced off of or price is held above that trend line, the, more, the, the, more st the stronger that trend line gets. You also have to look at a trend line in connection to how weak or strong a trend is. If we're looking at the euro here, this is a very strong downtrend. Okay, It's positive. It's moving down. It's got strong slope. So we see price goes down, eases, goes down, eases, goes down, eases. And it's a continual downtrend. Now we can see that maybe here we went through a time when traders were trying to get a decision. They were kind of indecisive. But then... Or we could see it as a retracement, okay? But then it continued back into its downtrend. So there are many different types of trend lines, but you can't force them, and you can't change the rules. You also can't change, you can use many of them, but when you try to force them or you try to find, ah, oh, well, let me look at a 45-minute chart or let me look at a one-day chart to establish something or let me just keep moving here, all you're doing is, BSing yourself. Okay. You need to establish the rules for a trend line, what types of trend lines fit your trading, and how you're going to analyze these, not per trade. Okay. When you do that, you're just outsmarting yourself, nobody else. And then it becomes a problem for you. Okay. So we will explore some further refinements of using trend lines in future posts or future classes, but not right now. So let's just focus on the most important element, consistency. There is one specific price point that a valid trend line should capture without cutting through other prices. The low immediately preceding a new high of the trend. Ideally, the trend line should also extend from the actual beginning of the trend as it does in the example I was just showing you. Okay. But that is not essential. If the trend is accelerating, it will not be possible to draw a single long-term line. Note 
that the trend line may cut through prices, prices past the high as the trend line is extended, but it should not pass through any price bars before the, before the low. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. So first, the trend line defines the limits of the swings that compose the trend. So it's important to be that there actually are swings before you draw a trend line. For instance, if you see many consecutive bars where you can draw a line across the lows of the bar, this tends to be a com common in parabolic moves near the end of trends. A trend line drawn across these lows will probably not be meaningful at all. So how to draw a trend line correctly. Once a trend line is placed and it's had a third bounce, it becomes active. Now, now that the price should be, now the price should find support and resistance at the trend line. It should have trouble breaking the line. If the price does break the line, it usually means the trend is over. Okay. Now, usually can be up to you. I believe in a very firm rule that the price cannot break the trend line at all, except I give it one bounce and a low. Because there's all kinds of freaky things that can happen in the marketplace. Okay. So sometimes you have some high validity because something happened at economics counter, something happened in a speech, and you get this new low or this new high that's crazy, and the price immediately returns to where it was. Okay. I give myself that one thing as long as I can explain it. Other than that, to me, there is no exception that once the price breaks the trend line, that trend line is over, and you have to reestablish a new trend line. So placing lines is pretty easy. All you need to do is identify two swing lows or highs and draw a line joining them. There you have it. Now your chart has a trend line. But wait one minute. Even though you can place a trend line based on the two swing lows or two swing highs, the trend line remains unconfirmed until you have a third hit. So val validating and verifying. Okay. As you can see here, and we're going to be using the same little graph for the next few, which I said, the same price movement. So as we can see here, price is moving up. We have a swing low. Here, where the trend has reversed, we take the lowest low, we extend it out through the next swing low, and then use our straight edge to bring it forward. Now, in this case, prices come down for the third swing low and validated that price. So if we look at earlier, I just want to take you back to this chart earlier. Okay. This is where we had seen the original trend line, and at this point, price had not come down for that third bounce. Okay. So we had a unconfirmed trend line waiting for a new swing low to touch that price and bounce off of it. There's no guarantee that's going to happen, but once it does, we then have a valid, verifiable trend line. Now, trend lines can be placed in any time frame, but they're more effective on longer time frames. Also, the longer a trend line is active, the stronger it gets. So now we can see in the chart on the right-hand side, the next step, that this is all the same asset, same price movement. So now we have our valid trend line. We have our three confirmed points. And now we see price bounce off of it, come up. And now it broke the trend line. This is the end of that trend. Okay. Now, we're not sure if this is a continuation, a I'm sorry, not a continue, a reversal or a retracement. But it has broken that trend, which is telling us this trend line is over. Okay. Even if you followed my acceptable rule that a bounce of a low could be directly below this, we didn't. We had the body of a candle below that trend line. And so at this point, it was over. But then we continue down, so there is no chance that that trend line is still active. So we would have to then recreate a new trend line using the new swing lows that has no, no violations. Now, unfortunately, 
too many traders okay would want to draw the bottom where you see the X okay. therefore they have their price and their trend line on the wrong prices so they would be expecting some type of market action or response to this price but the correct person who drew their trend line on correctly would not be reacting to that price because it is not on the trend line so this is how you would have had to redraw that trend line once it is broken connecting the two swing lows and waiting for it to move out into the future so you can be, if you don't draw it on correctly, you're waiting for some type of action or reaction, and it's not happening where you want to happen. You miss it entirely. So remember, we start out, we draw a line connecting either swing lows or swing highs. In an uptrend, we use swing lows. In an up-down trend, we use swing highs. We simply mean the peaks and the valleys created with zigzag prices. Once we connect peaks with other peaks or valleys with other valleys, we want to see that those lines have not been broken by any candle or low between those two points. Now, you've probably noticed that I have referenced two or more highs or lows. The reason I mention or more is because trend lines can continue to be relevant far out into the future and can be bounced off of several times. As a general rule of thumb, the more times a trend line has been hit and respected with a bounce, the more important the market believes it is. Okay. So let's go back over to my Euro US dollar chart that we looked at just a minute ago that had my longer term trend lines on there. Okay. And Let's change this to a one-hour chart. And now we can look at the longer-term trends and see what happens. It, number one, gives us a better perspective on price movement. It would have given us a much better definition of the price movement in between these two arrows here as you extend to these price lows. As we look at it and move it into a longer-term chart, well, there we – okay. So as you can see, this is simply – a trend line that was drawn back on the about the 7th or 8th of, no, of March and move forward. So we have one that was drawn here at the blues. We have one that was drawn in the red. So we have a longer term trend line. But those two trend lines continue to help evaluate where the market is going because as long as they stayed active and they had no breakthroughs, they remained valid trend lines. So you could have gotten a lot of trading success or information through these prices by extending them out into the future until they're broken. When price came down to this red line and bounced off of it or broke through it, you would have had some information. Same thing when it did the blue line. Now, our current short-term trend, when we're looking at a four-hour chart, is a very steep trend, and we have a very good trend line drawn on there. But by looking at trends in longer term, you get better perspective on the asset also. So each time you see that price bounces off the same line, the more likely is that others are watching it too and playing the same game you are. This could help you get several good entries in a row but remember, trend lines won't long, trend lines won't last forever. So you want to make sure you set proper stop losses to get you out quickly if the support and resistance trend lines eventually fails. Now we want to remember to buy into bullish trend lines and sell into bearish trend lines. The trend is your friend. The steadfast rule should also apply to trading trend lines. For experienced traders, this basically means we should only look to buy at bullish support lines and sell at bearish resistance lines. For traders not into trading jargon, let's just follow the simple images below, next to it and I'll explain this to you. When price is moving up, you want to take advantage of whenever price hits a trend line and bounces off of it to buy. 
you don't want to look for the selling opportunity here because you can't project what that price is going to be. There's nowhere and no method that will tell you on a, based on a trend line where the, that price will bounce, where it will push and ease and then bounce back. But when you have a bounce off the trend line, you can then simply trade it going up to exit the market when it comes somewhere near your previous high. But even if you had traded successfully against a trend, you would find, I'm just going to get my mark on here, you would find that the most pips you could have made was here. So maybe you could have made 15 or 20 pips, but if you would have traded with the trend, you could have run for 100 or 200 points. So ultimately, even if you trade correctly, I would have much preferred to trade that movement than that movement. This movement, I made a lot of money. This movement was higher risk and made me a little bit of money. Same thing in the reverse situation when you're selling into the bearish trend line. When prices are moving down, you should be trading down and looking for your opportunities to trade price moving downward. Because trading only in the direction of the trend will let you exploit potential trend line bounces as efficiently as possible. And while they won't give us any winning trades, they won't always give us winning trades, the trades that are winning trades should give you more pips than we have been attempting to place trades against a trend. Coming full circle, trend lines are a very simple tool to use. You are connecting dots on a chart, but hopefully the three tips I gave you will help you get them on correctly. Make sure that the lines you draw are connecting two or more highs or two or more lows, but have not been broken by the price between those points. Remember to look for a third bounce to validate your trend line. Also make sure you're taking advantage of trading with the trends by looking for buys in bullish markets and sells in bearish markets. Whether you use trend lines or indicators, price action was ultimately determines how much money we make. Learning about price action and how trends move is never a bad idea. Price constantly moves up and down even within a trend. So understanding the price movement and the relationship or defining these price trends can help you along the way. They also help you in the beginnings of technical analysis. One of the best reasons to learn how to read a chart properly is so that you can apply technical analysis. Not every trader believes in using technical analysis, but it can be useful even if it's not your primary trading tool. Now, trend lines give you several other pieces of information. They give you three distinct but related pieces of information that you can use independently or together. They show you the direction of the current price movement. They also show you the strength. And this is very important to understand how strong the trend is moving is a great indicator for you to use when you're using other technical analysis. Okay. And it will give you future support and resistance for the current price movement. These three pieces of information can be used independently of each other, or they can be used together as part of a larger trading system. So remember, you get direction of price movement, strength of price movement, and support and resistance. They will also help you measure breakouts. Breakouts are one of the most common techniques used in the market to trade. They, can, they consist of identifying a key price level and then buying or selling as the price breaks that predetermined level. They also will help you, which is the most important point, understanding what is a retracement and what is a reversal. Because one of the biggest problems that new traders have or inexperienced traders is that they're buying and selling at the wrong points. Okay. Because if you understand that price doesn't move in one direction, and when price is moving up and eases back down, too many traders jump to leave the markets and they don't realize what they're looking at is simply a retracement. And they get out of the market. And what happens, they miss that whole surge forward. So understanding the difference between a retracement and a reversal are very important. Retracements require a slightly different skill set and revolve around the trader identifying a clear direction of the price to move in and become confident the price will continue moving in.
This strategy is based on the fact that each move is ex in the expected direction, the price will temporarily reverse as traders take their profits and novice participants attempt to trade in the opposite direction. These pullbacks or retracements actually offer professional traders with a much better price at which to enter in the original of the original trend line. Okay. Retracements are only used by traders during times when a short-term sentiment is altered by economic events or news. This news can cause temporary shock to the market, which result in these retracements against the direction of the original move. So retracements are very critical and understanding and identifying is very important. And I think it's two weeks from today, we have a class in chart patterns and trend patterns, which will study breakouts, continuation of reversals, and retracements. Because identifying these points and understanding where price is moving will get you into the market at the right time and will keep you from panicking and getting out of the market at the wrong time. Because reversals are generally used by technical-based traders during times of little fundamental activity. At these times, the markets tend to range or move sideways with no clear direction. Traders look for a key price level that they can use to trade directly from an expectation of a bounce when price hits it. The bounce provides small, quick opportunities to take profits from low volume market activity. So reversals are great during sideways trends. Common levels used by traders with this type of strategy include old highs and lows from previous trading sessions, pivot point levels, Fibonacci levels, and areas in which these three, three of these levels overlap. Okay. So you have to be able to tell what is, and using your trend line will help you, what the trend line was broken line, was a possible reversal, or was it a retracement? And this is what you want to look at critically, because if you're trading this price down, you would have wanted to make sure you exited if it was reversal. If it was a retracement, it was going to continue back down this downtrend. You wanted to be staying in the market. So we also want to be able to identify when an uptrend has hit its maximum level and is reversing into a downtrend. Okay. There's many ways of doing this, and we'll learn about this in our class, Chart Patterns and Price Patterns, to identify these patterns and how to find them and trade best with them. Okay. But in the meantime, you also have to learn all about support and resistance levels. Now, your trend lines give you your initial support and resistance levels, but the more support and resistance levels you have, and the more better ones you find, the more better you're going to be able to identify price movement. Because remember, price is just like a ball bouncing. It hits the floor, bounces off, goes up and down, up and down. And if we can use science to calculate all of these bounces, we can make very good trading decisions. So thank you very much for joining us today. We'll talk to you again, and thank you for being part of the ETX family. Have a good afternoon, and thank you once again for joining us. Bye now.